I'd like to call the meeting to order of the regular annual meeting of the Ketchikan Indian Community on January 17th, 2022 at 1 p.m. This time I would like to welcome all of you. My name is Gloria Burns. I am the president of Ketchikan Indian Community and it's my honor uh, to give the opening prayer today. So if we would all like to bow our heads and go to our creator in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day and this beautiful land that we live upon. We ask for miracles to be in our community, that everybody that is ill and unwell, that they might be blessed and that they might feel healing within their lives and within this community. Heavenly Father, we pray for our armed forces, wherever they are, that they might come home safe to us. We ask so many things in your son's precious name. And we give you all of the praise and all of the glory here today. Amen. At this time, we will have the posting of the colors. Council, this time, please be seated. And thank you so much to our veterans. We appreciate your service and sacrifice. Sungaitla, Hadalasis. Today, we are joining you from the traditional homelands of the Gunahari of the Tantaquan. Gunaschish. It is a true honor to be having our meeting on your traditional homelands. Thank you for uh, acknowledging the Tongas tribe or Tondaquan for uh, the annual meeting for 2021. We're proud to be here to represent the Punka Nation of uh, Ketchikan and the special year that we had last year, which was, which was very difficult, we want to do a song that encourages us as a people. We know that Native Americans are really uh, susceptible to COVID-19. So we want to acknowledge that through our song, I Went Up Above. It's a song for uh, acknowledging the God above. We want to get this song a little bit uh, lively today so that it gives hope for the future, for our children. And we see our children up here, the young ones, so we're going to sing to everybody in, in the Ketchikan in the community a song of hope and prayer. We're going to chief. Okay. Good.
Thank you to KSC members, KSC Council for the invite. We'd also like to thank KSC for the COVID vaccine shots that has been given out that you continue to be safe out there for yourself as well as for your families that we continue to move on on things that we do today. We are the Sonia Kwan K Fox dancers. We thank you for the invite to be part of your program today. Hadalasis, it is truly an honor to be addressing you today as the president of Ketchikan Indian Community. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge all the loss and heartbreak that we experienced in 2021. Our community has suffered greatly by the loss of so many of our precious people, our resources that we can never get back. We all have been affected by tragedy associated with drug overdose, COVID complications, tragic health conditions, and uh, tragedies associated with unsafe housing. This has created a heart pain in all of us uh, that has required all of us to come together to be um, as supportive of each other as possible. The pandemic is and has played a huge, huge role in our physical and our mental state. It has been particularly difficult on all of you as the tribe has navigated a variety of mitigation strategies that have limited programs and tribal services. The tribe has put substantial energy into strengthening our strategic plan for the Bureau of Indian Affairs programs. We look forward to staff finishing the clinic's robust plan so that we have a clear path forward on how to address the issues that we have within our clinic system. To all of you, the citizens of KIC, thank you so much for the grace that you have shown as our staff work tirelessly to identify and fix broken systems. And to all of the staff, tribal and non-tribal alike, goodness cheesh for all of the love, care, and dedication you provide to our citizens, our most precious resource. In 2021, travel was very minimal. Alternatively, the council attended the many national conferences and tribal consultations via Zoom, where we were proud to represent you as we worked hard to advocate for increased funding opportunities as well as tribal sovereignty. Staff have been working diligently to improve communication internally 
as well as externally. Please join our team as an employee, an elected official, or join one of our many committees as an at-large member. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, please reach out and share them. Together, we are truly strong like Cedar, and every voice has the ability to heal and to bring us closer together and make us stronger. As 2022 begins, I have now been the tribal administrator for, Ketch, for the Ketchikan Indian community for the past few months. Busy leading our administrative support team in overseeing all of KIC's programs that provide assistance and services to our tribal citizens. As you will hear throughout this report, tribal administration guides and supports our directors and managers and their teams as they bring quality programs and services to each and every one of you, our tribal members. By doing so, our tribal members have the opportunity to use and participate in many valuable programs specially designed to serve the needs of our elders, our youth, our families, and all of our eligible tribal citizens. We are providing support in the areas of education, healthcare, behavioral health, housing, family services, and much more. As our tribal members make use of these resources, they, bec they become fully vested in our community's administration and are invited to hold us accountable when our services to the tribal community fall short or does not address the needs of the entire tribal community. It is our intent to create a healthy atmosphere that not only supports those families and individuals who need a little help in their lives, but also proactively preserve our culture while demonstrating to the community how we honor our elders and members by responding to their needs and showing them our appreciation. Tribal administration strives to ensure that our health care program has the best medical service offered in the community. This happens when we hire local doctors and nurses who express a desire to stay with KIC for a good portion, and if not all, of their careers. It happens when our people can see the same doctors and nurses when they come to the Ketchikan Indian Community Tribal Health Clinic, not just from month to month, but from year to year. In my first few months as tribal administrator, we have already addressed some of the systemic needs of KIC. We are now on the road to fully addressing the issues faced in our clinic operations to create a healthy and robust medical program for our people. This includes securing not only our permanent full-time providers, including primary care physicians and nurse practici practitioners, pediatricians and nurses, but also solidifying our diabetes program behavior health services, and wellness support services. Just recently, we established a fitness center for tribal members to ensure their opportunity to get and stay healthy by exercising on a regular basis in 2022. We will continue to make all-around improvements to our medical program and will be working on bringing more comprehensive medical services to our tribal citizens. In the year ahead, tribal administration will continue to press on toward our goals of providing the best service possible to our tribal citizens in all areas of our operations. I will also be looking for additional opportunities to hear from you as you share your opinions on how Ketchikan Indian community can better meet your needs. Thank you. Hi, this is Cheryl Yisley. I am the chair for the Advisory Health Board. Um, 2021 was not as challenging as 2020 was. However, we did experience different challenges this past year than before. The continued response to the COVID-19 epidemic was more efficient and effective. KIC Tribal Health Clinic started vaccines, 
in January of 2021, clinics were held regularly and our tribal members were provided regular access to vaccinations. KSC Tribal Health continued to follow our mitigation plan and update it as needed, depending on CDC recommendations and total, or if, I'm sorry, and local response needs. We had several changes in, in our advisory health board. Donna Hole and Marcia Ramirez both served short term in 2021. We appreciate both of them for their knowledge, experience, and input while they served. Kim Wilson joined and has been an asset with her work history and knowledge of KIC Tribal Health Clinic. Some of our highlights for 2021 include COVID, COVID vaccination clinics held and reports given regularly, mitigation plan followed and implemented as er, and updated as needed, continued telehealth services, medical director and providers have been hired. We implemented Cerner and the data was merged. It's still a work in progress. Quarterly meetings with the Tribal Council and Advisory Health Board have happened. Regular collaboration has been scheduled with the Advisory Health Board Chair, Tribal Council President, and KIC Tribal Health Clinic Administration. Suggested updates to the Advisory Health Board bylaws were sent to the Tribal Council Governance Committee for review and approval. Review of the Dolly Jensen policy and credentialing policy has happened and updates are pending. The Advisory Health Board received much needed Robert's Rules of Order training and Med Trainer training. The Advisory Health Board did a SWOT analysis of the Tribal Health Clinic and participated in training with OCO. Two of our Advisory Health Board members participated in strategic planning for the KIC Tribal Health Clinic. Onboarding packets have been created and we're awaiting approval for the new um, packets to be given to the Advisory Health Board members coming on board. We participated in budget workshops. Um, the patient advocate job description was updated and we now have hired someone to support our patients. And patient access has become a top priority for the advisory health board. And I just wanted to take a minute to thank those uh, advisory health board members that their seats are coming open. Um, Kevin Johnson, thank you for your expertise and your support and your care for our tribal members and our patients. And Kim Wilson, thank you for your support and your care and your, and your um, expertise for our tribal members. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Leisha Scottford and I'm the health director for Ketchikan uh, Indian Community Tribal Health Center. Uh, I'll be going over some of the highlights of 2021. Uh, in 2021, we continue to uh, uh, have a very challenging uh, year. Uh, the Ketchikan Indian Community Tribal Health Center continue to adapt to rapidly changing environment uh, and the way we provided care to our community as well as responding to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, KIC has a comprehensive emergency management plan uh, in place and our incident command uh, continue to be uh, in operation through 2021. Uh, and will continue most likely into 2022. KIC partners with the state of Alaska, Ketchikan, Gateway uh, Boroughs, and the city of Ketchikan, as well as Peace Health uh, Medical Center to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, efficiently and effectively. We developed a mitigation plan approved by the state of Alaska uh, and our tribal council to allow KIC to remain open for medical services. KIC continues to enforce uh, strict guidelines as per the state of Alaska or the CDC in an effort to maintain the safety of our patients and staff. Unfortunately, in September of 2021, we had to uh, close the clinic uh, just for a very short time uh, in an effort to control further spread of COVID uh, amongst the staff. Uh, but KIC remains diligent in ensuring the safety of our community. In 2021, uh, two vaccines uh, for COVID-19 were approved by the government on an emergency basis. Our COVID-19 vaccine uh, team uh, continued to work diligently to ensure we were up to date on information, planning, and implementation of the vaccine program. 
KIC continue to work with our partners to ensure the rapid delivery of vaccines as well as testing. We commend our staff for the hard work that they did uh, and also our administration uh, and we support them uh, for, with such a rapidly changing environment. Uh, some of the initiatives uh, for 2021 include uh, we received the vaccines uh, from Indian Health Services in the state of Alaska and were able to offer it to all our tribal members. We continued our services by triaging our patients and also through telemed. We implemented COVID vaccine service and began scheduling first dose, second dose, and boosters. We designed a COVID testing area within the second floor. The first floor gym was finalized uh, and our wellness department launched a wellness program for our employees. We also had uh, uh, the uh, uh, AAA HC and the CARV uh, surveyors uh, uh, survey our organization and receive very positive feedback. By the end of 2021, the clinic had filled full-time providers and hired the new health director, which is myself. Uh, the new providers that we have on staff are Dr. Andrew Sink, which is uh, medical director, Crystal Panino, he, she's a uh, uh, nurse practitioner, Patty Thornton, she's also a nurse practitioner, Jenny Wilkes, uh, a, a nurse uh, psychiatric uh, nurse practitioner and Joan Strutz, also a nurse practitioner. Uh, KIC is working uh, in close partnership with the administration to develop a retention plan through pay and benefits that will support long-term commitments from our caregivers. And lastly, the new health electronic uh, uh, health records, uh, which is Cerner, was successfully implemented in September. Uh, Cerner connects our clinic's uh, records uh, to the Alaska Medical Center specialty clinic so that we can provide you with better patient experience uh, and better care. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Pickerel and I'm the Deputy Tribal Administrator. I'm here today on behalf of the Finance Department. The vision for this department is champion of sovereignty and culture through integrity and compassionate stewardship of tribal assets for the benefit of our membership. And the mission is to improve communication, transparency, and accountability through teamwork for the benefit of those we serve. Currently, the Finance Department is going through some transitions and we will not be able to present the full picture for KIC's finances for 2021. But in general, our finances are stable and we are looking forward to new opportunities for expanded funding and assistance for tribal members in the coming year. Looking back at KIC's admirable efforts to reach out to tribal members was most evident with the increase in the amount of financial assistance. In the last six years, KIC awarded more than $26,329,409 in assistance to our tribal members. This money circulates four times over with an impact of more than $105 million in our community. As you can see from this slide, from 2016 through 2021, we have enhanced direct membership support. The large increase from 2020 to 21 comes from federal sources for COVID-19 relief in response to the current global pandemic. One of the highest priorities for the Finance Department in 2021 was a distribution of American Rescue Plan Act funds, and we anticipate an even larger infusion of funds that will be coming in 2022. Our members can anticipate the following ARPA assistance. Three rent payments of $1,500, three mortgage payments of $1,500, one heating oil or fuel payment of $600, one payment of $1,000 per food, one payment of $333 for fire, sludge, and EMT. And out-of-town tribal members may expect a one-time payment of $500. In addition, the KIC Tribal Council has dedicated $10 million to a healing center to address substance use disorders. I'd like to thank KIC Finance Committee members, Treasurer Norm Scan, Vice Chair Trixie Bennett, members Chaz Edwardson and Gianna Willard Flannery for their help this year on the Finance Committee. And a big thank you to the hardworking finance staff, April Edenshaw, Bianca Adams, Tara Hayward, Selena Charles, and Erica Hoff. Thank you very much, it's an honor to serve you.
Para la CIS. Uh, right now, we're going to just take a few moments while the executive assistants add the names of those uh, uh, citizens who have just entered to the Wheel of Names for the door prizes. And then we will be going ahead and we will be, um, we will be, I think doing 20 door prizes is what we'll do. And so it'll turn her over to Crystal and Aaron to go ahead and go through those names.
party story? No, it's a brief one. Stacy Fawcett, congratulations, Stacy. This one is price under nine, I think. The Delicate Print T shirt. I believe it captures some celery steak. The next one it is a Vitamix blender. Oh my gosh, I've always wanted a Vitamix blender. It literally blends your like all of your any vitamins or anything down to zero. Yay, Kale! Awesome! Vitamix, I sent you the t-shirt. I love that. Okay, next prize, I believe this is prize number eleven. Frankie Wolf. $250 gift certificate. Drum roll. I see a lot of fingers crossed. Pro Hawkins! Congratulations, $250. Thirteen, lucky thirteen. Octopus painting. This is so cool. An octopus painting. Jennifer Astry. Octopus painting. Congratulations. This is number fourteen. Prize number fourteen. We have six left. Journey Mask by Artie George. Nice. Here we go. Drum roll. April Edenshaw. Congratulations. This is prize number 15. Humpback Whale Painting. Humpback Whale Painting. Number 16, Kelp Basket by Lisa Doyon. Kelp Basket by Lisa Doyon. And the winner is Starla Goni. Congratulations, Starla. This is number 17. Ted Kinky Action Travel Bear. This is prize number 18. Free live rice and grain cooker. Free live rice and grain cooker. And the winner is Isaiah Hall. prizes in this round. Tea Sweeper Loose Leaf Tea. This is a Tea Sweeper and Loose Leaf Tea. Prize number 19. Thomas Ronald. Congratulations, Thomas. And this is the last prize in this round. Prize number 20. Fine Print T-shirt. Fine Print T-shirt. And the winner is Kayla Williams. Congratulations, you guys.
guys, that is our first 20 prizes. We will be doing this two more times after this time. All right. How, uh, thank you so much, Melissa, for helping us announce some of the prizes that we're giving out today at our annual meeting. Before we move on to the committee reports, I'd like to introduce our tribal attorney, uh, Steve Hartford. He will be giving a little introduction of some of the work that he's been working on. We're really excited that in the last year we were able to hire uh, in-house counsel that could really help us uh, along quite a few goals that we have, including land into trust and fighting for rural status for our community so we have better, better access to our traditional um, subsistence or food security. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Steve. He comes to us after working in Sitka for some time, and we're just very appreciative to have him on our team. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my report addresses three areas that my office has been focusing on in the last year and will continue to in the new year. Number one, strengthening our sovereignty. At the direction of the Tribal Council, the Office of the Tribal Attorney has been working on several initiatives that will strengthen and expand our sovereign rights as a tribe, including having the lands and properties owned by the tribe taken into trust by the Secretary of the Interior. The goal of this project is to enhance our ability to exercise sovereignty and domain geographically over the lands that the tribe owns. The successful completion of this will open up a host of opportunities for the tribe to better manage its resources, deliver services, and provide new economic opportunities for our members. We are also advancing the interests of the tribe in restoring its hunting, fishing, and gathering rights. In the short term, the tribe has reestablished its own direct harvest of the herring row fishery. In the midterm, we are working to reestablish subsistence rights of KIC members on Revilla Island by advocating for the redesignation of our area as rural. And in the long term, we hope to join the efforts of other Native Alaska tribes in once and for all, taking back the control of managing and harvesting our own traditional food sources. Number two, stewarding our resources. The Tribal Attorney's Office has been providing legal guidance to our policymakers on the use and burgeoning opportunities for our tribe with the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, as well as the 2021 Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Together, these programs will result in bringing resources in excess of $50 million into our community. They require careful examination, management, and oversight. We are providing that guidance to ensure that KIC is able to maximize its opportunity as in these once in a generation uh, opportunities as they unfold. Number three, supporting our families. Also at the direction of the council, we are providing support and guidance of KIC's ICWA, which stands for, as you know, Indian Child Welfare Act, the office that manages that within the tribe, with the goal of better protecting our tribal children and supporting our tribal families. We brought the assistance of specialized legal counsel in on difficult and complex cases. Additionally, we will continue to work closely with KIC Social Services to ensure that we are using all of our sovereignty and legal resources to help protect and preserve our families and our culture. On a personal note, I'm just finishing up uh, my, just about to achieve my one year anniversary here with the tribe. It is an honor to be able to serve the peoples of KIC. And I wanna thank the council for their support and uh, it is really uh, professionally rewarding to work for a council and a tribe that is so actively and strategically engaged in asserting its sovereign rights uh, as an indigenous people. Gunlashish. Thank you much, so much, Steve, for providing uh, that report in brief. At this time, we will begin the process of going down the tribal council committee reports. The first committee report that will, some of these reports will be provided you in person and some via recording. 
uh, if any of you had the opportunity to attend the uh, candidates forum, you may have noticed there were a few technical difficulties. And so some council chose to go ahead and provide it, a recording in the event that those technical difficulties again happened. And then some have decided to provide the report in person. I'm really grateful. It looks like Ted Ferry did a great job of fixing their audio. So I'm excited to turn this over to Norman Scan, who is the treasurer of the tribe to give the report for the finance committee. Mr. Scan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, tribal members, tribal council, health board, administration and staff. Thank you for joining us on this day as we honor a great man who fought for quality for all people, Martin Luther King Jr. And of course, I would like to honor Elizabeth Pradovich who fought for equality for our native people. I've been the chair of the finance committee since May when our previous chair, Donna Frank pursued other interests. I wanna thank Donna for all the work she did for the tribe. I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to our current finance committee members Vice Chair, Councilwoman Trixie Bennett, Councilwoman Gianna Willard Flannery, Councilman Chaz Edwardson, AHB Representative Nora DeWitt, and ex officio Gloria Burns. As you may know, it's been a challenging year for us, but yes, yet we persevered. I would like to thank finance staff, past and present, for doing the good work of the tribe. They worked dilig dil diligently on our audit our program budgets and all other financial work to ensure that the tribe's funds and services were protected and in good working order. I have a few highlights of the year and I'd like to remind everyone that all approved action of the finance committee gets moved to full tribal council for the final approval. Highlight number one, we approved the purchase of the overflow parking lot on Tongas Avenue. We look forward to the development of the property to have a much needed shipping and receiving building on it. Highlight number two, we approved funds for the feasibility study for residential treatment center, our wellness center. And we're, look, we're excited to see that come to fruition. Highlight number three, we approved funds for the startup of our business development corporation. And we're looking forward to the development of our business side. And finally, we approved the budget modification to fund our new re-envision program. This will give our members that have had challenges in their life to get a second chance. Again, thanks to staff that not only did the everyday work of the tribe, but also assisted with the planning, development and disbursement of the federally allocated CARES and ARPA funds. Be well, be safe in 2022. I look forward to the day when the coronavirus is but a memory and we can meet again in person. Gunnish Chish, Norm Scan, Treasurer, Ketchikan Indian Community. Oh, uh, Mr. Scan, uh, we appreciate all the work of the finance department. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, the education and training uh, the chair of the Education and Training Committee, which is uh, Judy Lease Guthrie. So the floor is your uh, councilperson Guthrie. Thank you, Madam President. And thank you to the KIC members for attending this meeting by Zoom today. The education program <clears throat> is directed by Sonia Scan and her staff of 15 employees. I'd like to thank them for all that they do to further the education and provide job opportunities for our members. <clears throat> Highlights from the program this year are the re-envision program, which is a new program that assists members by providing employment for those who have been recently released from incarceration. Although the program is new, it has been very successful and provides a necessary service to members who need it. This year, the education program was able to award 40 
advance education opportunity scholarships to higher education students. One scholarship was awarded from the Mary Jones Excellence in Healthcare and Excellence in Healthcare. 91 workforce development grants were awarded to members for certificate programs, work, and interview clothing. The computer lab at the education building is available to all KIC members. Job ready help is available to those needing assistance in writing a resume uh, for job searches and mock interviews. The Haida Clinkett and Simpson language classes are offered to members of all ages via Zoom and some in-person classes. Simpson classes will take place outdoors again this spring. This year, we are offering the Clinkett language classes at the high school. Last year, we were able to offer the Simpson language at the high school. The Education program awarded 34 Esther Shea grants to members so that they could attend cultural classes. Tribal Scholar Scholars Program, which serves about 20 students from middle school and high school is very successful. The school district is very supportive of our teachers and our students and the graduation rate for high school seniors in tribal scholars is over 90%. The education program offers many services to members of KIC. Please review the annual report, visit our website, or call the education program for more information. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Judy. At this time, I would like to uh, call upon the chair of the Policy and Personnel Committee, Marcy Fields. Good afternoon, tribal members. I am so excited to be here. I've had a great year serving you on um, the Policy and Personnel Committee and the Social Services Committee, which are both very dear to my heart, as I am sure they are dear to you. Um, first, I just wanted to thank the creator for allowing me to be here, as he is all things. Um, first, I'll talk about the Policy and Personnel Committee. Um, over the last year, our committee has been working on an overhaul of our personal policies. In the last couple of months, the tribal attorney and I have been engaged in jumpstarting the process. Our goal is to complete a review and update all of KIC's employment policies and, ha and have all our updated employment practices and protocols contained in a new employee handbook, which will improve ease of reference and understanding of our practices for all KIC employees. As part of that project, the committee is working on drafting an entirely new Ordinance 8. The new ordinance will be a substantially streamlined version of our current Ordinance 8 and will incorporate, by reference, our new handbook and will include only those important employee guidelines that should be contained in our laws, including tribal hiring preferences, sovereign immunity, and equal protection and disability rights. It is also anticipated that the project will include an important overhaul of our employee grievance process. We are hoping to bring all of these things forward by the first half of 2022. Next, I have social services. Social services committee is fun. Um, we work on a lot of policies there before they go to the policy committee. The director is always really hands-on. The staff are amazing. Um, the elder care program has served 26,000 individual meals that were prepared and delivered, which I think is outstanding. Um, and this, this Thanksgiving, the elders received $100 gift cards. Um, snow remo removal assistance has been going well, and um, as you all know, the weather has been crazy, so thank you to the staff for that. Uh, the ICWL program has been really busy with 119 investigations. General Assistance is serving many families. They have a food pantry. 
And we are really excited that we had Betty back in the program because she has been there for a long time. Um, this victim services have served 500, I'm sorry, 5,470 cases, so they are also very busy. Um, and then I just wanted to go over the employees that work in social services staff, like a little shout out to you for doing such a great job. We have the director, Lynn Kwan, special projects assistant, Dan Danielle Lugwinson, sorry, Danielle, receptionist, Deidre Reyes, case management supervisor, Doug Gass, social worker, case manager, Patty Green, Indian Child Welfare Specialist Andrea Zamora, General Assistant Specialist Betty DeWitt and Sandy Barges, I'm sorry Sandy, um, Victim Service Program Coordinator Michael Toole, Victim Service Case Manager Brianna Owings, Victim Service Case Manager Valerie McLaren, Domestic Violence Specialist Richard Piccaro, Domestic Violence Specialist Riley Boss, Alder Service Program Coordinator Linda Williams, Adult case manager is um, an open position, so if you'd like to apply, please see our website. Elders, caregivers, Shirley Snook and Anthony, I'm not even gonna say her last name, Anthony C. Meals and Wheels cooks, Joanna May Dundas, dishwasher prep cook, William Bird, Meals and Wheels driver, John Lloyd, and Meals and Wheels dispatcher, Dan Keita. Thank you guys all so much for your service. We appreciate you. Um, make sure you're voting, get out and serve your tribe. Thank you, how ah. Ms. Fields for the report on policy and personnel and social services. At this time, I would like to turn it over to the chair of the housing committee, uh, which is again, uh, Judy, Lee, Judy Lee Guthrie. And she will follow that up with a report on enrollment as she is the chair of enrollment as well. We're just so appreciative of Judy. She really took on a lot of chairmanships of various committees this year as we had resignations. So appreciative to all the work that you've taken on this year, Judy. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> And thank you to KIC members who are watching this meeting by Zoom and to Myrna Cheney and her staff for all that they do to provide affordable and safe housing and services to our members. KSC Housing received $974,000 from the American Rescue Plan. This will go towards building a triplex on Woodland Avenue. The units are a three bedroom, a two bedroom and a one bedroom. Construction is expected to start this spring. KSC Housing also received $271,000 from HUD Cares for mortgage assistance and utility deposit. This program ran from May to August of 2021. In September, KSC Housing presented the Indian Housing Plan to KSC members for comment. This new plan includes three new and amended programs. They are rental assistance, homeowners assistance, and emergency temporary housing. The Ketchikan Fire Department, the Red Cross, and KIC Housing have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Fire Safety Plans and Inspections for KIC members. This program is for the year 2022. If you are interested in participating in this program, please call Housing. KSC Housing Program has several programs that may be of interest to members. They are listed in the annual report and at the KSC website, or you can call housing directly. If you are interested in serving on this committee as a member at large, please contact Crystal Mann or Aaron Burns, Tribal Council Executive Assistance. And now I'll go on to enrollment. Thank you to the members for watching this via Zoom, via Zoom. And thank you to Carol Corbett for her hard work in updating all files. She has been doing this for more than a year 
and will continue to do so until the files are current. If you can help us update your file, please contact Carol at 907-228-4900. The Enrollment Committee took action to accept 124 new enrollees this past year. We accepted 30 applications for relinquishment and 25 members were moved to the role of remembrance. If you have a family member who needs to be moved to the role of remembrance, please bring documentation to Carol Corbett. The current total enrollment for the Ketchikan Indian community is 6,389. The Enrollment Committee adopted Ordinance 11, the Adoption Non-Base Roll Enrollment. We also worked on and finalized the Enrollment Committee bylaws. An enrollment drive was held earlier this year, which was very successful in enrolling new members and in getting current documentation from members so that their files could be updated. Another project that the enrollment officer will be working on in the future is the enhanced tribal enrollment card. This card will be able to be used as a form of identification when members travel by land, sea, or air. KIC offers many services to members and we will continually update that information and pass it on to new members. Please attend the KIC Tribal Council meetings via Zoom the third Monday of each month at 530. You can contact the Tribal Council Executive Assistants for more information on how to log on to Zoom. The staff distributes a summary of, these, of each of these meetings. They are posted on Facebook and at the KIC website. Thank you for taking the time to be a part of this important meeting. And it is an honor to serve you as a council member. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much uh, for your report and the energy that you've given. At this time, I would like to uh, introduce Gianna Willard Flannery, who is the chair of the Land Use and Planning Committee. Georgiana Douglas D. Nan Uijin, Diane Douglas Willard D. Ao Uijin, Sanu Ga Hinu D. Kyung, Gailas Gustu D. Kulagin, Ketchikan Student Uijin. Hawa, my name is Gianna Willard Flannery, and my Haida name is Sanu Ga. I am currently the newest member of the Ketchikan Indian Community Tribal Council, and I sit as chair of the Land Use and Planning Committee. Uh, the committee is in charge of the oversight of the KIC properties for programs or investments. Um, we will be overseeing any future clinic remodel floor plans and substantial changes to approved clinic plans. And we'll also be getting um, updates on the land into trust status. Because I was only appointed in October, um, we've only had one meeting so far and we'll have one meeting in the near future for the Land Use and Planning Committee. Um, during our meeting in October, we recommended to full council to designate the 10 mile property to the Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation for the future site of our new wellness campus for rehab and detox in accordance with our five year plan. Also during that meeting, we uh, recommended to full council to designate the first floor of the Wells Fargo building downtown to the Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation for business opportunity. Uh, we have planned for our next meeting um, to discuss a new maintenance building, an education building, a homeless day shelter, um, and land for a culture camp to give it a permanent site. I would just like to thank the other members who sit on the committee, Judy Leafs Guthrie, 
Lloyd Rivero, and President Gloria Burns. Hawa. Well, uh, thank you so much, Gianna, for providing us with this video. Uh, Gianna is in the room physically with us as well. At this time, I would like to um, introduce the Our Way of Life uh, Chair, Trixie Bennett, who is in the room currently and is the Vice President of the Tribe at this time. And she has provided a video recording as well uh, regarding the activities of the very busy Our Way of Life Committee. Trixie Bennett, you cut through a sock, think it. Ye Nakatsiti, Katchari, I cut, tall ten Dutch can I cut, Nanya E Yadi, Katchkana Ak, Stucking Kwan. I said, My name is Trixie Bennett. I'm a raven frog from Wrangell. I'm a child of the Katchari clan and the Sticking River people. My mother was Minnie Larson, and her mother, my grandmother, was Emma Shakes. I am the vice president of KIC, and I chair the KIC Our Way of Life Committee. Before I get started, we give honor to our grandfathers and the original people of this land, the Sonia Kwan and the Tanta Kwan. I wanna take a few seconds to recognize the Our Way of Life Committee. This year's committee included myself, Norman Scan, Marcy Fields, Randy Williams, Rochelle Hull, Chaz Edwardson, and the main staffers included, include uh, Tony Gallegos and Aaron Burns. Thank you all for your work this year. I grew up in Wrangell, as did both my parents, and growing up in Wrangell, our family lived very much a subsistence lifestyle. Between subsistence and commercial fishing, we always had an abundance of food. Little did I know back then just how amazing our foods are. Our foods not only sustain us physically and spiritually, but they teach us about who we are. Um, our foods connect us to all that's living on Tlingitani. When I was just a young girl, <clears throat> Growing up, I noticed that wild fish jammed the creeks and jumps were seen from the ocean all the way to the rivers and up into the spawning grounds year after year. It isn't like that anymore. It's become harder to get our fish. Chinook on the Unicor declared a stock of concern in 2018. The sticking and the taku are sure to follow and Uligan on the Unuk, Unuk have declined significantly as well. Mining upriver in the Eunuch, the Stikine, and the Taku threaten our salmon. 80% of our wild salmon come from these three rivers. In 2022, we look forward to keeping you informed of our ongoing activities and the ways that each of you can help in our fight to protect our lands and our way of life. Be sure to participate in the upcoming Board of Fish meetings. Um, it's been postponed, but it's gonna be happening in, in the next couple of months. Um, other ways that you can help is I encourage you to take, um, find ways to support Salmon and our way of life by liking and sharing our KIC and Facebook and other social media posts. Uh, KIC Cultural Resources Department maintains a great Facebook page and it contains information to keep you informed and also how you can participate and help with the work we are doing around increasing access to our foods and protecting our way of life. Um, in closing, I just wanna thank everyone for being here today and for listening. Hot ye adi. And again, get engaged. Um, stand up for Samo when you could do it. The Facebook page URL is posted here on the screen and we will put it in the comments too. Uh, feel free to reach out to me or any of the committee or um, KIC staff. Join us at our monthly meetings. Um, that's it for today. Um, just enjoy the annual meeting and if you haven't already, don't forget to vote. Kuno chish. Well, uh, thank you so much, Trixie. At this time, I would like to ask the chair of the Veterans Committee, uh, Councilman Rivero, to go ahead and provide the report. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, members of KSC. Thank you for being here. It's good to see all of you. I'd love to see you guys in person. <clears throat> it's been an honor for me to be uh, the committee chair for our veterans. You know, as we honor our veterans who unselfishly placed their lives on the line for our freedom, did you know that there is over 30, over 383,000 veterans identified themselves as American Indian or Alaska Native 
which represents 1.5% of 26 million veterans across America. My goal, our goal as the committee, and in that committee, let me recognize that committee, uh, Chair and myself, I have Norman Scan, Marcy Fields, uh, Cheryl Yisley, and uh, of course our ex officio, Ms. Gloria Burns. The goals of, in which we have been working on and, I, and the goal is to complete them is that we're, we're gonna help these Southeast Alaska veterans to allocate the land in Southeast Alaska um, to create and establish a color guard, our wall of honor at 2960, and then our bylaws for the Veterans Committee. Our veterans have given us freedom, security, and the great on the, for this greatest nation on earth. It is impossible to put a price on our freedom. We must remember our veterans. We must appreciate them. How a gunas chish di oichen. Thank you. Gunas chish Lloyd. At this time, um, we have a special place on our agenda. Uh, to hear from the Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation. Uh, the newly ratified bylaws were approved by, of the business corporation, were approved by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And as such, a business corporation, Ketchikan Indian Community, again, uh, instituted a business corporation. And the president, is a, I think they call it the president of the business corporation, or is it the chair? Uh, Justin Williams will be providing some remarks uh, about their activities. And did he provide a video, Crystal? So if you could please uh, play Mr. Williams's video. Hello, everyone. Let me start off by saying thank you for attending the annual meeting. And it's a privilege to be presenting for you on such an important day for our tribal community. My name is Justin Williams, and I'm the chairman of Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation. I'd like to take a moment to thank the tribal council for appointing Sue Pickrell, Randy Williams, Pete Jensen, and myself to the corporate board of directors. It's worth mentioning that each of us on the corporate board are KIC tribal members, and we all have prior business experience and education. As you most likely know, KIC was organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act. In the same act, Section 17 enables KIC to create a corporate entity that can conduct business for the tribe. The numbering of this particular section is also why individuals commonly refer to this type of entity as a Section 17 corporation. One thing I'd like to add here is the fact that Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation is and always will be wholly owned by Ketchikan Indian community. Let's do a quick recap. We've talked about who created Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation, who is on the corporate board, and who owns the corporation. Now, let's move on and take a look at the mission statement. Our mission statement says that we endeavor to develop Ketchikan Tribal Business Corporation into a stronger, healthier, and more prosperous company that continues to reach higher levels of economic competitiveness. This particular slide displays the current organizational structure of the corporation, which was developed by the corporate board. I'll pause here for a moment so you can take a look. So all that being said, now I'll talk about what we plan to do in the future. At a high level, we look forward to starting for-profit entities, creating new jobs, and allowing these new businesses to grow. To give you an example of what I mean when I talk about growing a business, generally speaking, 
when a new business is introduced, it usually starts out small. And as time goes on, the business starts to grow until it eventually reaches maturity. In this graph, business growth is expressed in terms of revenue and time. Please know that we've been working very hard to get this corporation started, and it's only the beginning. We anticipate making some exciting announcements in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and learned something new about the corporation. Thank you for your time and let's start building a tribal economy. I'd like to say thank you to those uh, tribal citizens who have submitted their names to be considered for the board and those that have been appointed. Um, they have a schedule in which uh, new board members are added and two seats will be coming up for that will be available for tribal citizens to apply for on that corporate board in the upcoming year. The vacant seat is the seat that the council appoints uh, from amongst the council to sit on that board with them. And so when the new council reorganizes, we will take upon the important business of choosing a person to sit on that, as well as choosing uh, to appoint uh, two people to the board. Thank you so much uh, to Justin for providing us with that report in brief. At this time, we have gone through all of our committee reports as listed, and it is time to turn it over to more singing and dancing, and then 10 more door prizes.
Ready? How uh, how uh, gonna change in direction that? Thank you so much to all of the dance groups who are willing to provide song for us. Uh, our songs, our ceremony, they're the ways some we elevate our prayers to our creator. And so it is just so, we're just so thankful as a tribe on how many people were willing to share those songs and share that time with us, even as they are experiencing personal difficulties. And so uh, at this time, we are going to move on over to more door prizes. And it looks like we are going to, um, we're gonna do 10 and then we're gonna pause. I just wanna give a, oh, we're gonna do 10 door prizes and then we're going to do the awards. All right, so door prizes, 10 please. And again, Melissa, if you will be our hype person and share all that great information with people. Hmm? Oh, and again, we're going to have to take just a brief pause because we've had people enter. We want anybody who in the interim has let the assistants know that their name is not on the wheel of names for prizes to have that opportunity. So we'll do again where they pause my voice and they take about five minutes to double check and add any additional names. If you are not sure if your name is on that list, please take the time to let the admins know right now. We certainly want everybody to have an equal opportunity to uh, win those prizes. How uh Council, it is time for us to get busy again on these door prizes. We are ready and prepared to hand out 10 more fabulous uh, prizes for to our tribal citizens who have registered and those of you who have just joined us on Zoom. I'll turn this over to the elected secretary of the tribe, Melissa Johnson, and she is going to help us with the next 10 prizes. How uh, Melissa? All righty, here we go. We're going to start with the prize first and then we will go ahead and do the name. So the first, we have 10 prizes. Go ahead, thank you. Here we go. The first prize is a copper canoe earrings. Copper canoe earrings. And the winner is Paulette. The barn. Awesome. Nice job. Okay, second prize of the 10 prizes. We have. Canning set with 24 jars. A canning set with 24 jars. Here we go. The winner is Alexis Gubitayo. Congratulations. Prize number three, we have a 10 piece cooking set. A 10 piece cooking set. All right, here we go. We got the winner winner chicken dinner is going to be Eleanor Coley. Our fourth prize of our 10 prizes, we have a baking set. I'm really hungry when they're getting all of these prizes together. <laughs> It is Gary Thomas. Gary Thomas, you got a cooking set. Our fifth prize out of 10 prizes. A seahorse print t-shirt. A seahorse print t-shirt. The winner is Dolores Churchill. Congratulations. The next prize that we have, or the sixth prize out of 10, is the Peter Dancer Necklace by Debbie Head. A Cedar Dance Necklace. The winner is, drum roll, Irene Dundas. Congratulations, Irene. The seventh prize out of 10 is a Native American Bible, notable Native people book sweater. 
sorry, I think that was three prizes. We had a sweater, we have a book, and I forgot what the first part is because I don't have a great memory. The winner is Gabriella Daniels. Gabriella Daniels, congratulations. The eighth out of 10 prizes we have is a Raven Totem by Woody Anderson. Raven Totem by Woody Anderson. Drum roll. Becky Strolskis. Thank you, Gianna Willard Flannery, for that. If you don't mind saying that really loud, I appreciate it. Okay, number nine, we have. Kombucha circuit, somebody was hungry and into fitness and health because not a lot of people know what this is, but we know what this is. This is for Arthur Williams Jr. Congratulations, Arthur Williams Jr. This is Marna's baby that she put on there. Okay, the 10th out of 10 prizes, the last one for this round, we have a Cuban Art Compact Bread Maker. A Cuban Art Compact Bread Maker. The winner is Naomi Michelson. Congratulations, Naomi. All right, that does it for this round of prizes. Back to the president, Gloria Burns. Ella, thank you all so much. So uh, over the past uh, several years, the Tribal Council has been trying to find out ways to honor and return to a place where we're lifting up our own people and paying attention uh, to our community. Uh, for many years in our history, they would have a citizen of the year and an elder of the year. And so we've been working through this process of making sure to figure out how to recognize our businesses, our citizens, our elders, our youth, and really figure out what that looks like. Uh, normally, um, we would be meeting in person and we'd be able to have flowers and prizes and love on each other and, and really hug each other. Unfortunately, because of just the situation that we are in as, as a world right now, we're unable to do that. Uh, so at this time, I'm gonna share with you um, the different people that have been selected for each of these awards. Some of you may have filled out the survey that went out in which we solicited some of the ideas of the many amazing talented people we have in the community. And we wanna share uh, who the choices were. And then at a later date, we'll get together and we will really honor and celebrate in a way that uh, lifts everybody up. Unfortunately, um, due to the mitigation uh, plans and, and just the rules that revolve around the Ted Ferry Civic Center that we're having our meet again, um, we really had to be careful about the amount of people that are in here. Uh, but that doesn't mean that these people and these businesses, they aren't just the most amazing. And so this year uh, for a President's Award, we had so many amazing local native owned businesses nominated. There were just so many, you look at the kind of impact that our native people have in this community and the really the economic growth that we provide. And it really was just awe-inspiring to see how many uh, entrepreneurs this community really has that are unsung. This year, uh, I chose to honor um, a coffee place. We went with B&D Coffee. Uh, they are a native-owned business. And it's an honor to say that the business of the year this year uh, to be honored by Ketchikan Indian community is B&D Coffee. So I'd just like to say to that business, what an amazing uh, service that you provide to our community. And we're just so appreciative. Thank you so much. The next uh, President's Award that I have to offer is the Citizen of the Year. And um, we are blessed as a community really blessed to have so many active people who participate in all sorts of arenas in our community. And like every other one, this was very difficult. Uh, for the President's Award this year though, I chose to honor um, somebody who is a parliamentarian, a historian, 
somebody who is integral to so many founding portions of our community. It is a great honor to announce that Dennis Demert is Ketchikan Indian Community's Citizen of the Year. So I just would say to Mr. Demert, uh, how proud we are of you and what an impact you've made historically and to this day in our community, still active in the A&B and still providing his wisdom and guidance to anybody who chooses to reach out and, and receive that from him. This is really exciting, the Emerging Youth of the Year. Unfortunately, we actually had just a few nominations for this. And I know that there are so many more talented and amazing youth in our community. And so over the course of this year, uh, if we'd like to see this particular award to continue in our community, I'd really like all of you uh, to consider mentoring a youth, looking at all the different talents they have. And when this award comes up in the future to nominate those amazing young people in your life that you see uh, act in a way that is exemplary because we have them. This year, the Exemplary Emerging Youth of the Year Award um, goes to a young man who makes it his mission in life to provide as much as he can for every elder that he can. And he is a hunter and a fisher and a provider, and he donates a great deal of the personal work effort that he has to our elders program. And so it's an honor to recognize Ronnie Ulat Pungawi as the Youth of the Year. I know that there are a lot of elders who receive fish and a variety of different foods in that elder program that would just be surprised to know how much of the food they receive comes personally from catch that he does. So that's really exciting. Uh, we are on now to the elder of the year. Um, this again, uh, we have so many amazing people. Unfortunately, this year, we have lost so many precious elders. It has been, you know, hard on all of our hearts to see so many people leave us. Um, but it is exciting to honor uh, this man for his work, uh, the way in which he shares his spirit and his song, um, the praise and worship, and the way that he is always there to support people uh, at funerals and in their time of need. And so this year, we would like to honor Fred John as the Elder of the Year. Fred is a blessing to all of us, and he brings great comfort to all of those that he ministers to through his grace and his hard work. Um, the last award that we have today, it's so hard to run through these. We should have them all here with us. We should be able to hug them and love them and take the pictures and spend that real important time to just lift up these amazing people who have done so many amazing things, uh, historic things in our community. Um, but we will have that opportunity in the future. And so uh, the final award that we have is an employee of the year award. And this one is really difficult. And the reason why it's particularly difficult is because Ketchikan Indian community hasn't done historically a very good job of lifting up our employees altogether. We haven't had a great retention program um, and we haven't had a comprehensive way in which we've spent time to honor all the different work of people. And so when that happens, it makes it difficult because how do you single out just one person when you know historically we have some of the most amazing, talented, and creative people who work for our organization? And so this is very difficult. Um, what made it a little bit easier was the sheer number of nominations that this particular person received uh, and her work ethic that she goes ahead and portrays throughout the community. It is my honor to recognize Crystal Mann as this year's Employee of the Year. Thank you so much, Crystal, for the outstanding work that you do and the heart and effort that you put into serving the tribe. I know. So we just, you know, we have so amazing 
so many amazing things. And it, by the way, happy birthday, Crystal. Uh, this is your birthday. I think it lands on Martin Luther King Day once every seven years. And so thank you so much uh, for your time and your energy and your hard work. Uh, in the future, we will have the ability to give them their awards and the prizes that we have selected, and we will find a way to honor all of these amazing people in a way that is fitting of us and our traditional values. Thank you for allowing me this brief moment to just recognize a few of the amazing tribal citizens that we have. Um, we have so many unsung heroes. It's a blessing to be able to lift just a few of those up. How uh, And at this time, we have persons to be heard. So if you have not sent your name in, does it go to Donna and Hillary, the admins? So Donna, Hillary, and Jody are sitting by. And if there is something pressing on your heart, a question that you want to ask or something you'd like to speak to, uh, we ask you to send a message to them. This is a person's to be heard that will be following the standard Roberts Rules of Order, which is that it won't be a dialogue back. It will be your opportunity to speak from your heart, the questions you have, the concerns, and then you will receive a answer in writing or a communication in writing. Uh, but um, we would ask, uh, we'll just give three or four minutes for anybody who did not have the ability um, yet to send that in. We currently have nobody signed up for persons to be heard. So uh, if, if that is on your heart, uh, send it to one of the admin. We're gonna mute for about three minutes and allow those people to go ahead and send their names in and then we'll do the final door prizes. Crystal, if you could mute me. All right. I want to first thank Marcia Ramirez for stepping up for Persons to Be Heard. It's always uh, good to hear from the people at this time. If you would spotlight Marcia, and Marcia, you have the floor for five minutes in Persons to Be Heard. How uh? Hi. Oh, good. I'm sitting in my car, but I just wanted to thank all of the tribal council members for their dedication to the tribe. I've been in your shoes, I know what it takes. And I also like to wish all of the tribal council members that are running, I wish you guys good luck. And I thank you all for your service to the tribe. Hello, Marsha, it's really good to see your face. I wish we could all see each other in person. All right, it's door prize time now. Let's go ahead and is it 14 left or 13? 22 left. Holy. All right. Let's get the last, let's get the last 22 off, uh, off the last 22 prizes distributed to our fabulous members. Let's go ahead and do that. Back over to Melissa Johnson, the prize giving out hype woman. All go right. ahead, Melissa. I like how President Burns said, Ole. Okay, we have 22 prizes. We have more people than prizes, but don't get mad. Here we go. First thing we're gonna do is the prize. First prize is Halibut Hook by George Bennett. Halibut Hook. That's a nice piece, nice job. Here we go. Here is the winner. Hillary Richmond. Okay, here we go. This is 20 or second prize of 22. <laughs> CBD therapy gel and oil, Devil's Club Salve. CBD oil and double Devil's Club Salve. The winner goes to Kimberly Matsura. Kimberly Matsura. Nice job. Okay, here we go. We have the prize of pressure cooker canner. Pressure cooker canner. 
Okay, here we go, drum roll. The All-American canner, Joseph John. Um, Joseph John. We have a carved beaver head by Norman Metcalm Jr. Carver beaver head. Here we go. We have Marna Cheney. Marna Cheney. Moon Math by Artie George. A Moon Math by Artie George. Robert Orr, congratulations, Robert Orr. The next prize is a Kelp Rattle by Lisa Goyon. A Kelp Rattle by Lisa Goyon. Stacey Williams, congratulations, Stacey Williams. All right, the next prize is an assortment fundament spices. An assortment fundament spices. Again, for the cooking theme that we have going this year. <laughs> I actually like it. Good job, Kristen. Ivy Rasmussen. Sorry. Ra I don't know why I can't say that. Anyways. I love you print t-shirt. I thought Lloyd was trying to get frisky there. He said, I love you across, but it was an I love you print t-shirt. <laughs> Kathy Gray, you got an I love you print and an I love you t-shirt. A salmon paddle by Ken Decker. A salmon paddle by Ken Becker. Savannah Yisley, congratulations, Savannah Yisley. Bear Totem by Norman Matt Kong Jr. Bear Totem by Norman Matt Kong Jr. And the prize goes to Maria Shields Zero. And the prize is Simon Willow Ulu. Simon Willow Ulu. This is our twelfth. Katie. Carlson. Katie Carlson. We have 11 prizes left. Heart shape cast iron. Heart shape cast iron. Pocket. It's hard to see all the words on the for some reason. Woodrow Watson Jr. We have a heart sheet. Okay. Okay, we have 10 prizes left. Sky Tracker GPS video drone. A sky Tracker drone with a video on it. Not just a drone, but a video drone. That's good. That's fancy. Alyssa Trumbull. Alyssa Trumbull. Okay, we have nine prizes left. It looks like a Simply Bella $500 gift card. Someone's gonna have lots of friends after this. Simply Bella, here we go. Autumn Yisley, congratulations, $500 at Simply Bella's.
10 piece pressure canning set. 10 piece pressure canning set. In the Shrek. Awesome. Mouse cap board game, book, golden words, and fried bread. And then also a sweater. That's a mouthful prize right there. I tried to get it all in there. The book, golden words, away. is about language reclamation. It's amazing. Awesome. And that's Larissa Sievertson. Congratulations. It can go to a better person for that. How many prizes are we down to, Crystal? Six prizes left. A large trade bead. You get two strands of large trade beads. Okay, here we go. It is Tasha Brendable. Congratulations, Tasha. Small beads, four strands. Trade beads, small beads. Four strands. Deanne Cooper. Deanne Cooper, congratulations. Okay, we're down to the last four prizes. Pendleton Woolen Blanket. Be nice. Pendleton Woolen Blanket. Melissa O'Brien, congratulations, Melissa. You have such a beautiful name. <laughs> All right, next we have a yoga mat, a water bottle, and an umbrella. All Pendleton. Ruth Pache, congratulations, Ruth. Congratulations. Okay, we're down to the last two prizes. Online paddle by Ken Decker. Form line paddle by Ken Decker. Richard Jackson, congratulations, Richard Jackson. Okay, you guys, this is the last prize. It looks like it's gonna be the Tongas trading. I don't know why we're spinning it, but I like it. Gift card for $500, $500 at Tongas trading. Here we go. This is the last prize right here. Barry Baluda, congratulations, Barry. You got $500 at Tongas trading. Nice job. It's coming back to you. <laughs> he was like, congratulations to all the winners. We appreciate all of you for coming and giving us grace in this moment where we're having to do so many things in ways that we're not accustomed to and we're not comfortable with. You know, we're really appreciative of all of you because our community is stronger with all of you in it and all of your voices being heard. So, you know, just one last plug out. Um, they're doing a really great job of keeping the space safe for voting. We'd encourage all of you to come out and vote, vote your values and the people who you feel will represent you. Um, with a diverse council, we can do some amazing things. And we really need all of you to take that time and energy to come and participate in our system. So. Um, I'm not even sure if you can see me anymore because they're scrolling. And at this time, you know, we're people who have a strong faith in our creator. And so as we began with the prayer, we will end with the prayer. And this prayer will be given um, in song in a traditional manner by our youth. Yeah.
so the words of that song say, my mind is relieved now. And so uh, the song was composed by Robert Davidson and given out uh, to the Hadas people to sing at the end of an event when everything is over with and everything is taken care of. And so while the annual meeting is now coming to a close, voting continues until eight, uh, get out and vote, exercise this uh, ability that you have. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, we look forward to an amazing year with all of you in it. How, uh, <laughs>